What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Today, I wanted to talk about the exams that are required to obtain your MD degree or your MD uh, license, become a licensed physician. Um, everyone knows about the MCAT and all of the um, courses and classes, exams that are required while you're in college, but once you get into medical school, the exams never end, and even being close to the end of residency, um, we still have exams. So I wanted to talk about those exams. The first exam, and the most important exam, um, is called the USMLE Step 1. It's the basically called Step 1 for short. It's, it's an exam that you take after your second year of medical school, and it basically covers the kind of the foundation, the um, your basic sciences, pathology, anatomy, all the classes that you take in your first and second year of medical school, you take a, a exam, a uh, computerized exam at the end of your second year. The exception is some schools, they, they let you take it after your third year, which I think is actually puts you at an advantage because you see a lot of the clinical, um, the patients in the hospital, and you can put this from what you learned in the classroom, you see it in a hospital, and I think it just sticks better, and it helps you apply the principles and concepts a lot easier. Uh, so um, medical schools like Baylor, and I think um, there's um, several other medical schools that do it as well, and Duke, they, they, they allow you to take it after your third year. Majority of schools, you take your step one exam after your second year of medical school. Most places give you about six weeks, four to six weeks to actually sit down and actually study for this because it covers so much material um, over your first and second year of medical school. And it's an eight hour exam. And like I said, it's the most important exam. And it's what residency programs use to, um, you know, separate everyone. So for the more competitive specialties, you have to do really well on your step one exam. You cannot take it over, like if you score low, you cannot take it to get a better grade. That one test, and uh, it's unfortunate that uh, one test kind of dictates your medical career. So uh, the next exam that you take is after your third year of medical school, it's called step two. And it's two parts to this. There's a clinical part where you actually go uh, to five, there's five locations, one in Philadelphia, one in Houston. I believe there's one, a couple other in the East Coast that allow you to um, do your clinical assessment. And that's basically when there's paid actors and you are have to come up with a diagnosis and a treatment plan and they, they kind of grade you on this. That's called your um, CS, clinical skills, uh, step two. And then there's a CK, your clinical knowledge. It's another eight hour exam that you take after your third year of medical school. And uh, it goes over more kind of management um, and more, a lot of stuff from the step one, but includes a lot more. So those are three exams that are taken while you're in medical school. Once you graduate from medical school in your intern year, or some most programs require you to take it before you go into your second year of residency, it's step three. Step three, which I didn't know, is actually two parts, actually two days of eight-hour testing. The first day, you show up and you uh, take a, an exam on the computer. It's eight hours. It's more of um, how to uh, manage patients as a physician. What medications would you give them? They give you clinical uh, vignettes, and you have to appropriately manage a patient. Uh, say, for instance, a patient has uh, no breath sounds on the left lung and you don't get an x-ray or uh, you don't do a, a dart in their, in their chest and don't put a chest tube in, you don't do those steps correctly, you may fail a portion of that, that uh, question. So, and the second day you come back and it's a little bit more clinical, um, more clinical vignettes and that's eight hours as well. So that's step three. After step three, you are able to... Um, uh, continue on with residency and in residency you have exams as well each year most subspecialties or most specialties have a annual exam in an orthopedic surgery in November of every year all orthopedic sur surgery residents across the US take the same exam and they test you about orthopedic principles about surgeries about um, different surgical principles about anatomy about um, uh, different classifications of fractures so you have to study throughout the year to do well in this exam and some programs if you don't do well you can't progress to the next residency year you get put on probation 
So they do take it very serious and um, um, you take it, like I said, once a year. And there may be some other exams kind of scattered in through the year uh, that may come up. After residency, uh, you take your board exam. So if I'm a pediatrician, you take the um, um, exam to be a board certified pediatrician. And that's basically what the annual exams try to prepare you for. For orthopedic surgery in July, after everyone has graduated from their residency program, everyone takes the, uh, Nas the uh, American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons um, National Board Exam, and you become board certified. Uh, and some other exams that are after residency, after your fellowship, where you have to, as a surgeon, present your cases, uh, a number of cases over a two-year period, and they, you go before a board, and they just basically just critique and try to um, dig all into your, your cases and ask you questions. Why did you do this? Why did you do this surgery? What are the indications for the surgery? Did this patient needed this? Why didn't you do it this way? So just a way to kind of um, make sure everyone is um, operating uh, the way you're supposed to be. So those other exams in order to um, uh, become a MD and also board certified, like I said, is step one after your second year of medical school, which is the most important test. Really take that test. Um, don't take it for granted. It's, it's um, a very important test. And um, I, th I think uh, you really have to put in the time for it and prepare for it. And I'll put some links uh, down below in the, in the description section of books that I use to study for that exam. There's step two, there are two parts that you take after your third year of medical school. Step three, two days of testing that you take while you're in residency, your annual uh, residency exams, and then to become board certified, there's another exam. So testing exams never end. Um, um, if you're interested in medicine, uh, if you tell yourself, oh, I'm not a good test taker, or um, I hate taking exams, well, you got to get used to it because there's going to be exams for the rest of your life. And every 10 years, certain specialties require you to take a certification exam where you have to take um, an exam to just to remain certified, board certified. So um, if you're struggling in the areas of test taking or in and um, exams, um, get some help, start off early. I wasn't the best standardized test taker. I took the MCAT three times, but I worked on it. I got help, I hired tutors, I went to preparatory courses and did everything that I could to um, improve my test taking skills. And they have improved over the years. Um, so those are the exams that you need to become an, an MD and also board certified. If you guys have any more questions, contact me at overcomingtheoddsbook at gmail.com or contact me on my website, antoniawebmd.com. See you next time.